at Sebring. It's the end of the second day. The sun is setting on a pleasant day we had here with great traffic. But the closeout of the event was an opportunity, closeout of the day was the ability to go fly in the RV-12 with Chris Thielen of the RV uh, and Synergy Air fully built project. Um, Chris told me that there's 350 or so of the, and that's today, of the ELSA models flying and they're gearing up to build one a week, you told me. So we're gonna see a lot more of vans like we haven't seen a lot of vans already in, Twelve, uh, fours and fives and sixes and all the way up to tens and now uh, jumping up to 12. In the RV-12 and we're flying a customer's airplane here so thank you very much to your customer for letting us fly. Let's start at the very nose because there's a couple of things I think are really interesting. The wings come off so sticking right out of the end of the prop spinner here that's the pitot tube because you can remove the wings pretty easily on this airplane and if that makes you ask the question about where the fuel is well right behind the pilot both the occupants of the aircraft and 20 gallons on board, burning about five gallons an hour at the high RPM of the uh, Rotax engine, uh, will get you uh, three hours of confident flying with a good hour of reserve time. Uh, you could push it a little bit further than that, but most of us need to get on the ground in about three hours anyway and uh, go visit one of those facilities. Then we come back to the Sentinel prop, and underneath the cowling here is a Rotax. 912 ULS engine producing 100 horsepower with a normally uh, carbureted power plant. Ran like a top force and really hauls this airplane up in the air. I don't know if you can sustain that climb, but right when we left here with Chris doing the flying, we were at a thousand feet a minute. Can you hold that up yep. to some altitude? Absolutely. So uh, again, uh, the van has always, van's aircraft have always had a performance parameter and this one is no slouch in that regard. But I gotta mention, I asked Chris while we were aloft, well, what are one of the differences if you're flying somebody who had, a, let's say, an RV-9 and he says, well, you know, that time in my life now I need to think about uh, something that doesn't require a medical. How is this airplane different? One of the significant ways that it's different, I want to come back and show you here, is where the seat is. If I were to slide up on the wing, I'm seated right about here, and I can look almost straight down out of the aircraft missing maybe 10 or 15 degrees of directly underneath but you can see down very well in the regular the other rvs i'll call them you're sitting at about mid-wing chris tells us and so you're not seeing down so well you do have glorious upward visibility but the 12 actually has some of the best visibility in the whole rv fleet so that's kind of fun seating of course side by side very comfortable i didn't even notice the seat and that's a good thing they, nothing was sticking me and i wasn't getting numb legs or anything like that four-point seat belts on both sides uh, and actually a five-point capability I saw in there too. We didn't use that today but uh, you can have very secure seat restraint in the aircraft. Uh, controls in the airplane, dual controls on both sides and on both sides you've got uh, rudder pedals and brakes because as we look down here to the nose wheel you can see this is a full castering nose wheel. Um, uh, braking action uh, seemed to be quite stout and so the the amount of effort needed to steer the airplane almost as though you were operating a steerable nose wheel so that was a nice convenient thing uh, looking further back uh, what is the baggage capacity back there assuming uh, otherwise loading is proper Chris? 50 pounds 50 pounds you can put in the back and it would be pretty easy to get at too some low wings are a little tougher to get at but partly because this wing is back further you can kind of get part way up on the wing and with the canopy open full up like it is, it looks like it'd be pretty easy access to get stuff in and out of there. Not quite the contortion that it is in some low winged airplanes. Uh, so now let's, uh, let's take the airplane aloft a little. Okay, so now we're up in the air. We've taken off, we climbed out at a thousand feet a minute. If I remember the numbers here, you can test, check me if I'm wrong. Uh, the Y, that is a normal angle of climb uh, that you would use on a typical climb out, that was 75, I believe was the number, and we were seeing <laughs> about a thousand feet a minute then, and that can sustain as we heard. On a later takeoff, we did one touch and go, and then we went off uh, with 10 degrees of flaps down and doing what I would call a short field or performance takeoff, and that was at 60, 60 knots, okay, good, so VX at 60 knots there. And of course the climb rate's not going to be quite the same when you're plowing through the air quite like that, but it really got you off the ground quick. Uh, two notches of flaps are available to you, and they use a lever arm in the middle of, between the two occupants, so either, either pilot can operate the flaps easily. 
Uh, very audible detent, and I'm sure you could feel it as well. I didn't actually put the flaps down myself, but it sounded like you could feel it. And you can look out at the wingtip. Now, this airplane uses a full aileron, uh, full span aileron, uh, which doubles as the flap. So you can see easily when you've got flaps down, there's a little part of the wingtip that is fixed in position. And uh, I'll, I'll glance out to the side, easily show you what position you've got in your flaps. So then once we got aloft, we put the flaps up and uh, talked to Chris a little bit about his flight out here, all the way from Oregon to uh, Sebring, just about as far as you can go on the continental U.S. And uh, you said you'd seen some wonderful tails, tail, uh, you had some tailwind for a while, and you were seeing 155 knots, did you tell me? Yeah. So, well, that's tailwind. But without tailwind, just true conditions, 105 indicated and about 118 true was the numbers that he's seeing. So right there at the top of the category in the Rotax engine, that's at 5,400 RPM, uh, which is a, a number it can run at all day long. And uh, then we uh, did a little bit of slow flight where Chris pulled back on the throttle and eventually worked down the uh, speeds of the airplane, put some flaps down. And uh, now we're seeing about 55 is I think about where you held the airplane typically most of the time. Um, and subsequent to that, we went ahead and did some stalls to see where the bottom end is. So clean stall, no flaps at all that is, uh, right at the magic 45 knot number that it should be. And there is a stall warning horn that uh, you'd have to be dead to not know that thing was sounding. I mean, it is, it's loud and that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. But you also got a very noticeable burbling. Uh, the airplane is shaking for you to say, hey, we're not going to right speed. You got to speed me back up a little bit. Just a little bit of nose down, a little bit of power, boom, we're right back to flying speed again. Repeating the action now with uh, flaps down, all the way full dirty, 30 degrees of flaps, 15 and 30 degrees of flaps available to you. Put down 30, now the stall speed, kind of bouncing around at about 40, 41, exactly where uh, Chris said it would be. So um, stalls were a very quick recovery. We'll get around to how that applies to landing here in a minute. Uh, we did some steep turns and uh, typical of vans, uh, I did, I, Chris did some where he was, he nailed it, the altimeter was fixed in position. I think he was cheating a little bit, but uh, anyway, it didn't move at all. I didn't do quite as well. I lost a little bit of altitude on a couple of the turns, but steep turns at a uh, 45 degree bank, almost no, without adding any trim. So from level, level flight, no trim, maybe, maybe five pounds of back pressure in order to hold the turn all the way around. Very, very easy. And typically, in all the motions of the stick and the rudder combination, very light and nice, without having a twitchiness to it. It wasn't too much response, but it, to me, it's you know the Goldilocks thing, just right. It was. About, um, I did my Dutch roll thing, which I like to do to learn about the controls. And my first ones were a little sloppy. The reason why I was overusing the rudders. So after that, did a little bit where we just moved the stick back and forth. There's almost no adverse yaw, just a slight hesitation, and then it came around the right way with no application of the rudder. I uh, did that both directions, about the same effect both directions. Then also tried pushing on the rudder pedals because in the ASTM standard requirements, you have to have a situation where if you've got the rudders deployed and you let go, the airplane should straighten out. Well, the experience was when pushing the left rudder uh, it'll slowly start to creep around. You could turn the airplane with the rudder only, but it's not much. Then as soon as you let go, it's almost like somebody snapped you on a rope. It's back to straight very quickly. To the right, it was a little bit more muted than it was to the left, but the response was the same either way. So very good qualities. Then we did some more steep turns and uh, I enjoyed flying the airplane a little bit. It's just a joy to fly this machine. There's just no question about it. Came back in, did a couple of touch and goes. Uh, I let, this is a customer airplane, so Chris did all the flying. I expected him to do a good landing, but feeling the controls with him, that's a piece of cake. This is a very easy landing airplane. You, if you have difficulty landing this airplane, you definitely need a little more instruction. It's, all right, so you're like me and you say, gosh, I love the RV-12. This is great. I want one. What's it going to take? Well, you can have it any of three ways. From Vans Aircraft, you can get an experimental amateur built. From uh, the Synergy Air and Vans combination, coming from Synergy Air, where the airplane will finally come from, you can have that fully built SLSA model. Amateur built, already 350 of these flying today, and somewhere north of that number have been sold. Uh, that's already getting up near the top of the category, and all of those were kit built. So we can watch Vans creep right up in that uh, national ranking, I'm sure, quite quickly. The difference between those two, Basic airframe and engine, I believe the number was 65,000 in that range. And of course, viewers, please remember these videos tend to stay on the internet for a long time. 
please check with the factory. We'll give you the web address in a minute and uh, find out what the current pricing is from either fully built or kit, but in the neighborhood of, let's say, 65000 and uh, with paint, with instruments, with the whole bit, about $80,000 you're flying in an RV-12 kit. So that's a very reasonable price for a good performing, top brand airplane. You want one fully built, the numbers are basically, the two figures are $115,000 and $123,000. $115,000 is the, it's, it's the base model, but that's really going to be all it takes for most people. And if you want all the bells and whistles, wheel pants and fancy instruments and cool paint job and the rest of it, that's going to run you about $123,000. All numbers subject to change. Check with the factory for the final details. But that positions this airplane, oh, maybe slightly above the median in numbers available from the whole range, uh, which goes from about 40,000 to 200,000 in the light sport category with many of the higher end machines that compete with this will be significantly more expensive, $25,000 to $40,000 more uh, than this particular airplane. It's all constructed, it's, it's all metal except for a few components. The engine bowl is fiberglass, the wheel pants are fiberglass, and the tail cone up on the top of the uh, uh, vertical stabilizer is fiberglass. All the rest of it's metal. And for those that are putting kits together, this is all match hole construction, I understand. So that's the uh, no jigging necessary in the home builder's experience. And there's lots and lots of Vans builders out there that are interested to be helpful. It's hard to come up with anything that's not right about this airplane. It's a beautiful job and I just have to admire once again the paint job on it. This is coming from Synergy Air. This is like a ready to fly airplane so it's painted and ready to go and it's a beautiful job of it. So great job to Vans Aircraft. About all the information I think we can give you right here right now but it's VansAircraft.com isn't it? That's right. And so there's no apostrophe in that. It's just V-A-N-S Aircraft.com. We'll put it up on the screen for you. I've got other information about the Vans aircraft and the whole fleet of airplanes in the LSA space and the light kit space. You can find that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks, thanks a lot for going along with us on another video pilot report.